Hi there. This is my third video response to Venom Access video series called Satan Invented Evolution. In this video, we will be talking about Venom Venom Access second video where he continued to talk about the Big Bang theory and where he talked about stellar evolution. Anyways, let us begin. Venom X started his this video by excusing himself for his plagiarism. He said, and I paraphrase, "People have been accusing me of stealing from Ken Hoven." But he does not copyright his, his material and he encourages us to do so. Okay, first of all, the main accusation is not that he is stealing from Ken Hoven. I mean, it is okay to use other people's material. You cannot always be original. As long as you credit the person, I think it is okay to use his or, her, his or her material. But we are not accusing him of being a thief. We are accusing him of not having a single creative muscle in his entire body. I mean, when he is copying stuff, he copies it wholesale. He copies everything, including the jokes, and then try and pass it off as his own. I mean, we are not accusing him of intellectual theft. We are accusing him of intellectual bankruptcy. Next, he did some reading again. So let us read together. Okay, um, this is the exact same setup as before. I'm recording this using Camp Studio, and this is a still image which I've opened with um, GIMP, so that I can do things like this. Anyways, let us talk about this quote. He is using the exact same tricks as he did in the first video. All he said about this quote is, yeah, that's science. I mean, what kind of an argument is it? That is an argument totally without substance. Only preschool pre students use arguments like this. I mean, it is simply impossible to debunk that argument because there is no arguments to be debunked in the first place. Next. He assumes that it is self-explanatory that something is ridiculous. Also, he implies that something being ridiculous automatically means that something is not true. Next, I mean, check this, uh, check this out. This again, just as in the first video, this is a conclusion. It is not a premise nor the inference to the conclusion. Simply showing us the conclusion and then ridicule it, but not showing us the argument to the conclusion. He is code mining and being intellectually dishonest. Also, check this out. Dot dot dot. Whenever you see a creationist quote something, and you see dot dot dot, always be very careful because it means that something was omitted. And when you when you know and when you uh, when you find out what has been omitted, usually you you shit your pants because you because you can see how out of context this this, this has been taken. And in this case, since there's no reference, we don't know where this quote comes from. For all we know, these are just words on a on a red background. I mean, it is just a coincidence that I know this came from Ken Hovind's seminar. But if I didn't know that, how am I so sure that this even came from a textbook? So that, in, so that in this case, we cannot even search the original to see what came before the dot dot dot. And finally, Benefam X loved to use derogatory names. He refers to the infinitesimal region as a dot. I mean, has the debate on science really be relegated to a war on semantics? I mean, you can, you can say dot all you want, but it does not change what it really is. Anyways, the next item uh, is the decreasing diameter of the Big Bang. That is basically the same as what he said in the first video about the increasing age of the universe. So I don't need to get into that right now. I mean, been there, done that. Okay, next he talked about the beginning of the universe and he asked, What created us, a dot or God? That question is misleading because it already assumes that we are created in the first place. I mean, that kind of question is just like the question, um, At what time did you kill that girl? It or, because it already implies that you kill that girl, and in this case, it already implies that we are created. And like I said in my like I said in my previous video, everything we see around us is matter and energy. Just like us, we are just matter and energy, only in a in a very very complex configuration. The correct question is: Are, na are naturalistic processes enough to explain this complex configuration? And uh, and, when you find, and when you understand natural selection, you will be inclined to say yes. Next, he talked about the conservation of angular momentum, and I don't need to go into that because Axan Dodo has already did a great job at debunking this. All I have to say is that I actually cannot believe that he used these arguments because it really shows how little he knows about the Big Bang theory. Anyways, that was all he talked about when he talked about the Big Bang, and as you can see, every single one of them is either a misrepresentation or an outright lie. And, and, when, and when you use straw man like this, of course 
the Big Bang is one big baloney, as he put it himself. Anyways, I want to talk a little bit about the, the real evidence that scientists use in support of the Big Bang. First of them is the, the expanding universe. I mean, it is undeniable that our universe is expanding right now. Even Venom Van Max himself believes in an expanding universe. So I wonder how he reconciled those two ideas. Because, because um, if the universe is expanding right now, then it must have been much smaller in the end. And if you go back far enough, then there is your infinitesimal region right there. So is it really that ridiculous? The next famous evidence is the high background microwave radiation that we find all around us. And um, scientists believe that this uh, this microwave radiation came from the Big Bang. So I wonder how he, how he accounts for this radiation if it did not came from the Big Bang. But isn't it funny that this two this two evidence is the f most famous evidence for the in support of the Big Bang, and that he didn't even mention any one of them? Isn't it funny? Anyways, next he talked about stellar evolution, and before he talked about stellar evolution, he talked about chemical evolution, and he said, "Never been observed, doesn't happen." So I just I just have one question for Venom from X: What does he think that's going on in the sun right now? What is that mechanism called, and what is actually going on? Enough said. Next he talked about the stellar evolution. He begins with something that I didn't expect. He begins with an evidence mm -hmm. of ignorance. He said, I don't know what happened, but I trust the Bible. So um, he doesn't know what happened, but he's still willing to tell you what to think. That's, that's just amazing. I mean, this guy has the biggest balls in the universe. He does not, what ha does not know what happened, but he's still willing to tell you what to think. I mean, that's just... <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, he, he talked about... Next, he talked about um, the argument of the fine-tuned universe. Basically, it's like this. This universe is so well fine-tuned for the support of life, and therefore, there must have been a creator. Um, I have to admit something myself. I, despite what he thinks, an evolutionist is not someone that is trained in all the fields of science of the evolution that he has defined it. I mean, I have training in chemistry, and that's it. When it comes to astronomy, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a total noob. So his, his arguments for, of the fine-tuned universe might be true, might not be true. I, just, I simply don't know. A few, thing, a few things did caught my eye, though. He talked about black holes, so I, su I assume he believes in the existence of black holes. Um, remember the argument he used to debunk the, the, the other evolutions. Never been seen, never been observed, therefore not science. Well, guess what? Nobody has ever seen a black hole before. The very definition of a black hole is that you cannot see it. So, what makes him so sure that black hole exists? I mean, the, the evidence that we have in support of the black hole are, are, are just as indirect as the evidence we have in support of the Big Bang or macroevolution. So what makes those two, those two evidence any difference? Also, do you remember what he said about the Big Bang? All the matter in the universe crunched into one? That's ridiculous. So, um, do you even know what a black hole is? <laughs> also, um, uh, he does not believe in stellar evolution. So if a black hole is not, is not part of stellar evolution, then what is a black hole? Did God create black holes on the same day that he created stars? Then you have to wonder, why did God create black holes? We don't need black holes. So why did he create it? Why did God put an artificial obstacle for himself? It simply doesn't make sense. But I suppose someone that plagiarizes his stuff from other websites don't take the time to think about things like this. Anyways, that was my third video. I hope you enjoyed it, stay tuned and thanks for watching my video.